thinks he's just an average guy leading a meaningless life. I guess I passed that down to him. If he could only see that there's more to life and it's right in front of him. Some of us go a lifetime and never grasp it. I know I did. How was your day? Typical. Well, Pulley called and he said that oil pump won't be here till Tuesday. Yeah, that figures. I tell you, Maggie, it just, things just don't work out anymore. What do you mean? Well, I thought I was gonna conquer the world. Just do more. I'm telling you, Maggie, I'm stuck. We own an old rundown airstrip. It's worth half as much as it was 10 years ago. In fact, we probably owe the bank more than it's worth. We do okay. I just don't want to do okay. I really don't want to be average anymore. What do you want? We have everything we need. We're a happy family. We have our home. We have... I know, I know. I just don't... There's got to be more to life than this. It just seems like all I do is go to work, come home, eat dinner, maybe even watch a little TV before I go to bed. And then it just starts all over again the next day. Daddy, look what we do. Well, I'm gonna go start supper. Maybe the problem isn't what you see, it's what you don't see. Good morning, Polly. Morning. Ever really find anything good in there? I usually find me a nugget about every morning. You see, I come in every morning in my quiet spot and start digging. Don't take me long till I find me something good. Then I kind of chew on it the rest of the day. In all these years, I thought you were just chewing tobacco. Well, Pulley, if it works for you, have at it. Hey, old Billy Hampton came by yesterday afternoon. Yeah, what'd he want? I think you know what he wants. Did Maggie tell you about the oil pump? Yeah, I understand it won't ship till Tuesday. That's all right, I got plenty of work to keep me busy till then. Daddy really loved this plane. He used to take us on trips around the valley. And he just quit. Parked it in the hangar. I don't know why. You know, your dad really loved you. I want it gone. Tell Billy to come pick it up. Tim, you don't really mean that. Yeah, I do. Just doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, it wasn't made to be parked in some hangar, gathering dust. It was made for a higher purpose than that. Is that one of your nuggets? Look, call Billy. I don't want to see it anymore.
So you got rid of the plane, huh? Well, news travels fast. Look, it's just a big piece of metal and canvas. It's just taken up way too much space in my life for too many years. It's just time to let it go. I wish I could help you, but I can't. If you consider it clutter in your life, then fine. But I'm telling you, that's not your problem. Then what is it, Maggie? Do I put too much stress on myself? Do I worry too much? Is that it? Well, somebody better care about these things, Maggie. I mean, nobody gets to just sit around the house all day and sing songs while their daughter plays in the yard and picks flowers. Or, oh, what about Brother Pulley down there chewing on his Bible nuggets all day? This is the real world, Maggie. It's hard, it's cruel, and it does not care, okay? I gotta go. Oh, um, Katie made this for you. What about breakfast? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. All right, Lord, I'm listening. Pulley, do you believe in signs? You mean, uh, like, stop or... No, don't no. Park? You know, like, like God talking to us through a sign. Of course I do. I believe he speaks to us through signs, through events. Sometimes he just speaks to us through people. Sometimes he speaks if we just slow down and listen. Why? What happened? Uh, nothing. I'm fine. You notice the plane's gone. Yeah, good. We needed it gone. Tim, maybe you need some time away from here. I'm fine, Maggie. I just didn't sleep well, that's all. Did you see where the Browns traded that quarterback we met last year at the convention? <laughs> but where did they trade him? To the Eagles. The Eagles? soar into your bedroom and do your homework. So, how was your day? It was good. Pulley went into Warren. He's going to be gone for a couple days, so I thought I might just take the time at the hangar and, I don't know, get organized. Uh, getting organized. That'll make you feel better. Yeah. 
I thought I might take Uncle Roy to lunch, too. Oh, that would be really nice. You need to spend some more time with him. Yeah. Maggie, there's just one more thing. I'm really sorry about the way I acted this morning. I was way out of line. I really just don't know what's going on. It's like I've got all these battles in my head and I can't win any of them. Have you ever thought about just giving them to God? Just asking him to take your burdens. I wish it was that easy. It is that easy, Tim. Please, just, just listen to me. You're always in a hurry. You never take time to enjoy the moment. Well, just look at Katie. I see her. No, look at her. She's a miracle from God. She's worth more than any hangar, any airfield, any airplane, any house. She is a miracle and God gave her to us, to you and me. We should treasure her more than anything else in this world. I know, but No, I, I really don't think you do. Look around you. We have friends. We have a family. We have each other. What more can a man want? God has blessed us with so much. You need to just sit down and soak it in. You know, at times life can be so overwhelming. And it's at that point that you just need to say, Lord, I can't do this alone. Please help me. It doesn't take a professor in scriptures to figure that out. You know, he lives in you, Tim, and he lives in me. And he wants to be part of our lives. He wants to be a part of your life. And I can't do that for you. You have to do it for yourself. Taken. Well, hey, boy. Have a seat, Tim. Good to see you. How are you doing? Doing good. Katie's growing like a weed, and you know the airfield's doing okay. How about you? Well, I can't complain. You, you ain't dots keeping me busy around the house. Ma matter of fact, I'm sort of glad you invited me to come out here. You rescued me. By the way, I see you still got your old truck. Yeah, I still drive it. I got rid of the old plane, though. Your daddy's plane? Yeah. Uh, it just hadn't been flown in so long. I, I knew it'd take too much to get it going again, so I wanted it, and I just, well, I got rid of it. I've got more room in the hangar now. You remember that time me and you and your daddy flew up to the Smokies in it? Tim, you couldn't have been more than five or six years old. Yeah, I do remember that. Are you flying much? No, I'm just too busy, I guess. Probably just too many things I'm handling here on the ground. Well, you need to get back up there. Yeah, I guess. What are you going to have today, Uncle Roy? Oh, Tim, I'm just going to drink water today. Water? You're not hungry? No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, really, I'm fine. Well, you got to eat something. Come on, it's my treat. I'm not really supposed to talk about it. But I'm fasting today. Well, what do you mean you can't talk about it? For the Christian, fasting is one of the most, it's one of the most awesome things that a person can do because it allows us the opportunity to really focus on Jesus and our relationship with Him. I fast and I pray. I look at fasting as a way to really help me to focus on Him so, so I can communicate with Him and He can communicate with me. So you just skip a meal? <laughs> it's more than just not eating a cheeseburger today. It's a way of, of setting myself apart, to set some time for just me and Jesus. I don't do it for show. 
and you're not really supposed to talk about it, but you ask, and I, I thought maybe if, if I explained it to you a little bit, Tim, it might help you some too. Wow. Well, I could use all the help I can get. Well, look, I was just reading here in Matthew chapter 6 about fasting. Let me read it for you. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do who try to look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for fasting. I assure you that this is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair. Son, don't say a word. Now, where was I? And wash your face, then no one will suspect that you are fasting except your father, who knows what you do in secret. And your father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. You really believe in it, don't you? Yeah, I do. I've only got one question. I mean, if I start fasting... <laughs> no, no, son. I lost this a long time ago. Didn't even know about fasting <laughs> back then. <laughs> Sometimes he speaks if we just slow down and listen. You know, he lives in you, Tim, and he lives in me. And he wants to be part of our lives. He wants to be a part of your life. And I can't do that for you. You have to do it for yourself. Just a face in the crowd Constantly grieving A holy God who deserves More than I ever give But this could be a brand new Glorious day where the chains I hold All fall away and the hope that you give Carry me up in the way Until I soar beyond mediocrity Why do I fail to keep the faith Forgetting the love that I've grown to adore Remembering the promise you never would leave me Remembering your infinite grace But this could be a brand new Glorious day where the chains that I hold All fall away you give could carry me up and away until I soar beyond mediocrity. But why can I hear what you're trying to say? The words of a loving king Why can't I see what's in front of me Maybe I'll
This could be a brand new glorious day where the chains that I hold all fall away and the hope that you give could carry me up and away until I'm soaring beyond mediocrity. God, I used to come to this spot all the time when I was a kid. I could sit here and watch the planes as they came roaring by. Then they'd ease off the ground and just sail off in the distance. I know I haven't talked to you in a long time, and I really don't know why. I asked you to lead my life years ago, but it's, well, it's like I got in the way and just started leading again. You've been good to me in spite of myself. Thank you for the life you've given me. For Maggie. For Katie Bug. And thanks for Pulley. Even Uncle Roy. God, thank you so much. Please forgive me for getting in the way of you. You deserve more from me, and I'm truly sorry. Lord, I want you back in charge of my life. I don't do such a good job on my own. I'm ready to follow. This could be a brand new glorious day where the chains that I hold all fall away and the hope that you give could carry me up and Sorry, but I had to. Maggie, I love you. And I'm really sorry for who I've been lately. He truly is amazing. He's always there, and he'll never leave us. I had the most amazing day. It all started when... <laughs> Hello? Hey, Pulley, what's up? No, that's not a problem. Yeah, I'll be right there. Pull his back. He wants me down to the airfield. You want to come? Sure. She's a beauty, isn't she? Daddy's plane. Just like when your dad first owned it. Boy, I don't, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. It's my gift to you. <laughs> I've always loved you and your family, and I wanted to do this for you. <laughs> oh yeah, I got something else for you.
she's fully restored, take her for a spin. Uh, I don't know if I could, Bully. Tim, a lot of us live our life like an old plane, but we were made for a higher purpose too. Instead, sometimes we just stay in the hangar day in and day out, collecting dust, never daring to reach, to enjoy, to grow. We just stay right below those clouds. We weren't made for that, though. We were all made to soar. Some of us just never make it off the ground. You go fly that plane. <laughs> Pulley, sounds like we've got some soaring to do.
This could be a brand new 